Well, hello and welcome, fellow shapers of the future. It's uh, a little bit chilly, so we're not going to hang around. We're going to get this fire going in a fairly rapid fashion, hopefully. So in my first aid kit, this is my big first aid kit, really, because um, I'm going to be doing a little bit of axe work and other stuff like that. I always have these little pads. Um, ordinarily, the small survival first aid kit would be just these two items. Um, this being dressing tape so that you can quickly seal any wound. Easy as that. Um, bung a bit of germline on, which is antiseptic cream, or any of its similar products. Whack that on the cut. Use as much dressing tape as you need, just to stem that blow, blood flow, really, until you get get home and give it a good proper clean. But that is my my basic first aid kit. I take that everywhere. But. As I say, because I'm working with larger pieces today, uh, larger like axes and things, we've got dressings and um, self-adhesive dressings, all the usual things you would find in your normal first aid kit, so we shan't go too much into that. What we want, we can't always get. try my usual thing which is uh, just 70% hand sanitizer 70% alcohol that is uh, spread it out on there a bit got it all over my boomerang this could go wrong <laughs> all right so I'll put it over that end know which spark gets it it just plonk it in here and then lots of skinny little dead standing pieces of hazel the reason I go to hazel is because it kind of um, when you break it up and stuff, it kind of goes like that. Without really needing any extra work, but I mean, these are great little bits of uh, tinder. I always try to get the bark off if it's easily done. Because nobody wants that bark. Unless it's birch. Or unless you're trying to make rope. Just another thing you could do with this hazel. See, look, it's just perfect dry wood. get things going with and obviously a little bit of patience just ignore it for a bit or something because there is enough to get going there and then trying to rush it isn't going to help and also I should have done this first really close off any vents because at the moment we don't want that wind. Uh, the wind will feed the fire once it gets going, yeah, but to get it going, it can often uh, just blow it out very easily. So, little wall of steel or aluminium. 
should help with that. It looks like it's going out, but I think a little bit more patience and we'll be okay. Start poking around now, that will definitely go out. And while we're here, we'll suppose we can use that on my hands, really. Nice clean boomerang. While we're waiting for that to get going, um, the boomerang. I've shaved more off of it. It is thinner than it's ever been. It's not as thin as it could go, but we do want a little bit of strength in it. Um, and yeah, I've smoothed it with my smoothing stone, my magical stone, which uh, I found on the beach a while back. Um, and it's starting to smooth off now because I'm using it as a, um, to burnish the boomerang like so. <sighs> this has the effect. I was actually spent probably half an hour burnishing it last night. Um, and it's super smooth now. It feels smoother than silk dare i say it really does feel like that will slip through the air quite quite effortlessly now after the burnishing and getting that lovely shine that also protects it from the water getting into it so quickly i mean yeah you will have to burnish it probably every time you use it um, because once it's got wet that will kind of unburnish it a little bit but yeah so we will be testing that out again to see if I've shaped it any, any more and if it's done any good. Right, the patience has worked off. The fire is going. We can start chucking some of this bigger stuff on. Oh, that just looks so gorgeous. It's got its own colour about it. Oh, that sounded awful. You know, to satisfy my need for the sugar. And the energy that it giveth. 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 Yeah, this is the uh, new oak spoon now. The other one has been 100% replaced now. I'm avoiding any... Um, preserve it is we're just going to burnish it every couple of days get my magic stone and literally all those fibers that are now sticking up because it got wet press them back down again and That'll smooth this stone out as well, which is something else I want. Incidentally, this stone is a bit of a mystery, and I would appreciate. I would uh, give you a penny for your thoughts on this stone. This is the mystery for today. Well, it's been a mystery for a couple of months. What is this bloomin' stone? Um, where did it come from? How did it get its bloody hole? And just, what is it? <laughs> it's been bugging the hell out of me for so long now. I've looked on the internet and there's so many stones that are like this that are, apparently uh, were used as ancient tools. But I don't think this is an ancient tool. So I don't think it's that. That hole looks too bloomin' perfect for nature to have created it. There's no gentle lean into the hole, or very, very little. 
and then it's a perfect hole. You could not bore a hole through there any more perfectly than that. So that brings us to the point that, well, except for maybe a whirlpool under the water, I guess with time a whirlpool would work a hole through a stone, but surely it would be the shape of a um, tapered shape, not a direct hole, all the same size all the way through. So now I'm thinking somebody has made this. <laughs> Modern day, if someone made this, they would need a diamond tip tool, I think, and water. Now, you're probably going to bugger up your diamond tip tool to put a hole through this stone. Why this stone? Why isn't it quite symmetrical it could have just gone another millimeter the other way up this way and it would have been bang central um, with balance that is you know if i balance it on my finger it balances slightly heavy on the wider end quite a lot heavier but either way so was it what i'm using it for is um Put a stick through. Thought that was lucky to find a stick that fits roughly, and I use it for the pendular swinging motion um, to get a, a drill motion. Whether that be a fire lighting drill or what I'm trying to been been trying to make for a long time now is a flint on the end of this piece of wood, and. Um, then with my system that I made in previous videos, just make holes in wood, primitive style. So was it that? It's possible. Uh, so then I went on into looking towards mythology and um, in particular, pagan times and uh, just after the Romans, just before the Romans. And this was almost currency in a way. Um, it was widely believed that a stone with a hole in was a magical stone. And it was sought after by witches, they say. But more on that later. Um, It's said, if you look through the stone, you see things as they truly are, is the most common reference I can find for having a hole in a stone. Um, these stones were holes were in so much demand, I believe that people actually started to make them much like this, possibly. Did someone make this to be a witch's rune and sell it? Um, you know, they would have sought the natural ones that occurred naturally. But maybe someone was making them. So the idea is you can see through there and see everything as it is truly shown. So whether it's a witch's room because witches used these, I doubt. <laughs> I think it's more the case the witch hunters would use these um, to basically burn a poor old woman who liked to make tinctures and help people out who lived alone in the woods burn her to her death <laughs> so has it got a horrible history of some kind like that so you can see my train of thought and then more recently i thought well like could it be a trawl net maybe an old trawl net. Uh, the coast where I live, you can trawl for prawns and shrimps. And there's cockles just up the road. So maybe it's something to do with that. There's also crab pots, things like that. I just think it was a lot of work to put in 
to something like this if someone made it and why would you when there's hundreds of other stones with holes in naturally just laying around so a penny for your thoughts on this these pennies add up i will uh i tell you and uh they will come back at you so a penny for your thoughts with this one because i'm very confused i'd like some ideas and you know these pennies will add up i'm keeping count i'm keeping track in my little black book with my poems in um of all of these uh, suggestions and pennies and thoughts and i'll get you a pint or something when you get up <laughs> to that price range which to be honest you are never going to actually beat inflation um when it comes to the point i don't think so you'd really have to do a lot of comment and to build up a point um and of course as you're building them up the price of the point is going up so there's no guarantee you'll get a point out of it is what i'm trying to get to but a penny for your thoughts shall be giveth So then I also got to thinking of other possible uses for this incredible stone. Maybe we could use this much like we did Stonehenge. If you was to mount this in a certain position at a certain time of day, so the sun shines through the hole perfectly, you would know it's that time of day or whatever. Uh, you could track the sun with this stone through the hole might make markings of where the sun is going throughout the day telling you things like which way is east which way is west um, and also what time of year it is so is it a time stone the annoying thing is i don't think i'll ever actually know but it ain't gonna stop me guessing So upon thine journey this this morning, I spied me this in the hedgerow. Um, and I thought, wow, that's a big one. Um, so. Obviously, this is going to need a little bit of research because I don't know 100%. I'm guessing you could eat that. Uh, but whether you'd get sick or not, I don't know. <laughs> I know it's not one of the most deadly, um, as I've got those marked. But yeah, you can see where it was small, much like the fly garrick does. Um, in, in fact, you know, if you change the colours on this, this a little bit, um, this would quite easily look like a fly garret. It's red with yellow, and these would be yellow spots, which were the, or whitish, spots that would be the original when it was very small. And it keeps hold of, and they expand, much like the universe out ever expanding and in the center of the universe we've got a time funnel coming down this mushroom that is firmly rooted or was into the ground of this earth the universe and the earth food for thought if not food for the belly i don't need to eat this i'm not hungry enough um i would if i was there seems to be a nice chunky layer there 
of white mushroom and I do think this is a field mushroom but uh, like a friend of mine on YouTube who recently found some that I think was possibly the same as this here on the side of caution with fungi and mushrooms but uh, definitely find out what the worst ones there's three main ones I think in the UK that are deadly poisonous and they're the ones to look out for so learn those ones um, and the rest yeah they could make you sick um, possibly for a few days maybe more who knows but generally it's the case just as long as it isn't one of those deadly ones you're okay you'll just be a bit ill or full up so yeah YouTube is a funny one for these sort of things I would love to say yeah you can eat that but unless I'm 100% I can't say you can eat that because that's disinformation and that's what I'm trying to avoid um, and I especially don't want to be responsible for someone that did eat it because I said it was so yeah some of the tests you could do um, is rub a bit on your skin on your uh, just on your arm or something rub it on the skin and see if there's any allergy to it um, and also if there's any stainage on the skin or any smells things like that also if you're going to cook it your nose is probably going to be the best thing I guess as uh, a lot of the bad ones do tell you they're bad I believe you get a warning but such a beautiful thing I'm actually going to pop this back into the ground I know it's fairly fruitless to do so um, this is actually a really nice place to have mushrooms. It's got some dark um, areas and it's very damp. Um, it's laying fairly low in some areas. In like a valley is per perfect really, isn't it? In a valley, but I haven't quite got that here. So maybe that's why there isn't so many mushrooms here. But either way, who knows? Maybe a spore will drift. Shout out to my friend, Drifting Spore. <laughs> <laughs>